and welcome to the Soundside Academy, a school for anarcho-syndicalist witch doctors. My name is Bernie Dernheim, artist, rapper, yogi, anarcho-syndicalist witch doctor. But that doesn't really tell you what sort of person I am, right? And I think, um, you know, if you're going to be taking classes with someone unknown like me on the internet, you want to have a bit of a better idea of the sort of person that I am. So this is kind of a personal introductory type video where I introduce myself to you. And um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna give you a sense of, of who I am uh, and what more importantly, what sort of person I am. Um, so how to delve into this delicate matter? Well, from a legal point of view, I have the status of fictional entity, right? That's my legal status, is fictional entity. And, but that doesn't really tell you exactly what sort of being I am. It just tells you that for the purposes of this world that we currently share, I am a fictional entity. Um, but I should say as well that regarding that fictional status, it is merely a legal status, and in fact, my experiences are very real. I experience the, the things that I described in a very real manner, and um, those, those, it's just that those experiences are occurring in a parallel dimension to your own. Uh, what's actually going on is I'm sharing the body, I'm being provided this body by an artist by the name of Ben Denham. He's my brother. He's my brother. That makes more sense than what he said, right? He, he said, I'm his cousin, but clearly we're brothers. And as you no doubt know, he's been helping, helping us out with some technical aspects of this production and some behind the scenes production research for this particular course that I'm delivering, right? But the point is, we're not cousins, we're brothers, and, um, and, 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 and a particular kind of brothers. We, we, we're a particular kind of brothers, a particular kind of trans-dimensional brothers who are able to hook up with one another through a kind of trans-dimensional network that exists between realities. We exist in parallel realities, and we use this network to speak into our neighboring realities. And I say our neighboring realities because our realities have much in common. In fact, they have almost every single detail in common, except for a few agents who are working across dimensions, who are able to alter personalities a little bit, look, I mean, you, you've seen it, right? You've seen those programs, right? That describe exactly the sorts of things that I'm describing here, right? That there are people who can communicate across dimensions. It's not, not exactly like um, that show on Netflix with the characters who can travel through dimensions through a set of kind of moves that they do. They can kind of go from one dimension to another by performing this kind of... Um, contemporary dance kind of sequence yeah that's that's kind of like the reality that that we find ourselves in here except we don't go jumping across dimensions because we don't have to because the ability to communicate with that dimension is provided to us by certain people who are able to become hosts of these trans-dimensional characters like your friend uh, ben Denham, my brother Ben Denham, he provides me with a host in order to speak to you across dimensions. So that is to say, all of that is to say that yes, I am and have the legal status of a fictional entity in your reality. But of course, but of course, as many authors know, fictional entities are real in another dimension, right? So they have a reality in another dimension. And um, that is to say, that is to say, a kind of true fiction, 
you know, a true fiction has a, a reality in another dimension. And what the authors are doing in that case is connecting to that other dimension through a, through a particular kind of writing practice, right? They're connecting to those other dimensions through the sort of way that uh, I'm connecting to your dimension now by hooking into someone's consciousness. That dimension hooks into someone's consciousness and is transmitted to you, uh, whether through that's through the kind of trance state that you might get into as you're writing or freestyling, I should say, too. That is another way of channeling interdimensional beings. And in fact, here in this dimension where I am known as Bernie Dernheim, I channel one of my brothers from another dimension um, and we are all in this. We're all doing this. So it's, it is an interesting process to be engaged with. And of course, there are certain levels of digression that we might enter into as we progress through different versions of ourselves in different dimensions. Now, okay, that's a lot to take in, I know, um, but let's let's just go with it for a little while. So I have the legal status of a fictional entity. That is my legal status in this dimension. My experiences are very real and I communicate them to you from a very real place. Uh, and I communicate through a particular person who occupies your dimension. And you'll notice that Pretty much all the political events that I refer to are mirrors of the events that are occurring in your dimension. Um, the, we are, as I said, very closely linked. We are very closely neighboring dimensions. So we are able to talk about one another's politics and, um, and, and, and have a deep understanding of where the where the other is coming from so the other thing that i should say about this 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 form of interdimensional communication is that it is a means for us to reinforce our networks of resistance to the forces of capitalism patriarchy and colonialism right that's one of the one of the ways that we're able to resist those forces is by building alliances across dimensions um, and it's a it's a particularly useful means to do that it's it gives us a form of flexibility in our thinking and then in our ability to respond to different situations because we are able to communicate communicate our forms of organization across dimensions. And that's really the key is how we organize collectively. Uh, that's the key to all struggles is our collective engagement. That is the thing that brings about change. So it is important to communicate these aspects across dimensions. And of course, in the first class, that's one of the things that we touched upon was forms of anarcho-syndicalist organization that will help to bring the change that is required on your planet, on my planet, where they're really the same planet, actually. Uh, so they share the same geology, they share the same evolutionary history, they share the same pandemics. So they're very, as I said, they're very similar places. Um, but we do need to find these ways to communicate across dimensions in order to be able to bring about the change that is required and also the change in consciousness once we expand to acknowledge that we are part of this larger network of conscious beings that goes across many dimensions in space, time and the other thing, we will once again be able to bring forth our vision of a more equitable world, one in which hierarchies don't exist and one in which we are free to create the relationships that are required to sustain us and the rest of the planet and life on the rest of the planet. So that's the, that, I mean, that's the main work of every anarcho-syndicalist witch doctor is to create those sustaining relationships with other organisms that will allow for the maximum flourishing of diversity of life on this planet. That's the larger goal. And that's, you know, ultimately, anarcho-syndicalism is just a, a way to get there, right? It's just a way to get there because 
that maximum diversity also comes from maximum autonomy within particular communities. So that's why it is necessary to dismantle hierarchies if we're going to get to that maximum diversity. And of course, as interdimensional time travelers and well, look, we're not time travelers now. It's the same time. It's the same time here and there. It's all, it's all happening at the same time. And that's what allows for these meaningful interdimensional communications to occur. It, right now, it's it's 5.06 p.m. on the 27th of May 2020. And it, that's exactly the same time as it is in the neighboring reality that I occupy, right? So, so we're all sharing this present. And that is one of the things that makes our meditative practices so powerful and gives us the ability to connect through these means, through these transdimensional means, is through a meditation on the present that we share. Uh, that's basically how we connect through this inter interdimensional network of beings who are fighting those forces of patriarchy, colonialism, and of course capitalism. Those forces that are attempting to eat away all of the life in our realities. Those are the forces that are munching like a hungry ghost on the resources of this planet. Yep. Uh, patriarchy, uh, colonialism, and of course capitalism, uh, munching away like a hungry ghost. And uh, yeah, they're the things that we must resist. So uh, uh, what else to say? Is there anything else to say? Anything else that you need to know about who I am? Uh, look, if you have any questions, please do post them in the comments. Uh, I will be responding to any questions that occur in the comments. And please do subscribe to this channel. Uh, it just, look, uh, see the thing is, right, what people usually say at the end of these videos is subscribe because it helps me to reach more people. But um, I'm not really concerned about that. I'm not really concerned about how many people I reach because I know that reaching one person is a really powerful thing, right? I happen to reach, uh, reach, reach, reach people across dimensions. And as soon as you can reach some, just one person across a dimension, then you have a very powerful perspective that you can bring. Uh, so if I'm connecting with just one person out there, then uh, that's enough for me. Um, so, but look, if you, if you do know other people who might be into this kind of discussion, this kind of connection, this form of resistance to those forces that I have mentioned previously, uh, then please do share this video uh, so that they might be in the know when it comes to this particular form of connection that uh, I'm exemplifying and I will continue to exemplify. Uh, so please do share with like-minded souls, with any anarcho-syndicalist witch doctors who might be in your circle. Uh, and of course, anyone who you think might, uh, might want to follow the path of the anarcho-syndicalist witch doctor, because, you know, maybe they just haven't found their calling yet. But maybe some of these descriptions of who we are as a people will connect with you. And I guess that's the final thing I'd like to say in this introductory video is just to finally give you my one of one of one of, one of I guess I guess it's the way that I most powerfully identify and the way that I most powerfully identify is as a forest person. I am a person of the forest. The knowledge I value most on this planet is the knowledge of the forest people. Those people who have been able to connect with their surroundings and live in as part of the dynamic equilibrium that is a forest ecosystem without reducing its diversity. Those forest people who have been able to do this are the true custodians of the deepest knowledge that exists on this planet. And uh, it's, it's, it's with that knowledge that I identify. 
I have a little bit, having grown up in the forest, I have a little bit of that knowledge. Uh, but there are great depths to that knowledge. And uh, some of our brothers and sisters, our elders in the Amazon, uh, really do have an incredible depth to their knowledge of the forest and how to live within the diversity of a climax ecosystem. Uh, that is an amazing thing. And, uh, and, and that is my main form of identification is as a forest person. That is to say, I am a forest person first and foremost and then yeah i'm an artist i'm a rapper i'm a yogi i'm an anarcho syndicalist witch doctor when we go deeper though into uh, into into all human beings family tree we did come from the trees we descended from the trees we are all forest people right in some deeper on some deeper level we know that the forest is our home as a species we get great joy in climbing a tree because that allows us to connect to our ancestors, those primates that dwelled in the trees. And we have that ongoing connection to that as a dwelling place, the tree house, right? We all have our romantic ideas about the tree house. I know I certainly do. But I also have within my body a particular tree house that I dwelled in as a young boy, right? That tree house is embedded within me. It's embedded within me as is the tree and all of its limbs that I had to climb to get into the tree house. That's all in my body. That's one of the things that makes me a forest person is my ability to connect to trees as homes, right? So that's part of a, another kind of genealogy, right? And that's our connection to a much deeper evolutionary history of what we are. We are all forest people on that deeper evolutionary level. Uh, okay, so that's 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 probably it, you know, in terms of just giving you an idea of who I am and um, what sort of person I am. Uh, so hopefully uh, that's inspired you to continue with the course, and um, I really look forward to having your company in future classes, and I look forward to continuing this connection with you through this technological means. So see you next time.